I think that, that takes us to another element of filming a documentary, which is remember that you're crafting something uh, that's going to be chopped, that you're crafting a story, and sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, you will likely, you are not just following and doing nothing. No, you're, you're going to have to think about your edit. So yeah, you will, like, you will likely ask your subject to, do you mind repeating that line? That was excellent. You don't want to, you certainly don't want to uh, feed your subject lines because it, there's a real fine line between, you know, getting them to say something that, uh, say, to repeat a, uh, uh, to repeat something they said that was pretty important and valuable that you want to get once more and simply telling them what they need to say. You don't want to, you really don't want to tell your subject what to yeah. say. They're not actors. Or Jim. ask leading questions. They so like, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can get them to kind of like, you can kind of steer them, but there is definitely like, there's a... Uh, there's ways that you can get people to say exactly what you want to say, even if they don't want to exactly say it that way. And I yeah. think it's always just more authentic and more ethical when you're asking like open-ended questions and then maybe you craft it like, oh, I really like what you said here. Can you speak a little bit more on certain subject here? Well, I think that's kind of important to point out. Like, look, you're going to let, like, especially if you're, you are sort of investigating this this person that you're documenting or the people that you're documenting you're like while you will have a plan you are trying to dig in deep and get them to uh, uh, tell their story and uh, you are the storyteller you are the person crafting said story so when things of note come out from your subject and it's not necessarily clear but you heard it you heard them touch on something that was particularly valuable you're gonna to wanna to get that back from them. You are reporting, you know? Um, especially if you're the one, if you're one man banding it, you know, both shooting and documenting the story, those are, th there's a lot that you're gonna to have to consider and that's one of them. Did something of note come up? Have them say it again. Um, and then also consider like, you know, uh, also consider what the final product is gonna look like. So after you've been following this person for however long, listening to what they've had to say, Think about the things that you might need that will actually construct your edit. Get a wide, get some inserts, meaning get a close-up of their hand doing something. Get a close-up, uh, get close-ups of elements of the location that you're at. Give yourself something to chop into so that you're not simply watching one, one linear shot of something. You know, you're still making a movie. Like that's, that's something to consider. Yeah. Um, and then too, uh, God, I, I had it and I lost it. Uh, it was a question. Oh yeah. Dealing with like, um, like emotional subjects. Sometimes you are going to have to ask emotional questions. Um, like, you know, and some people like, you know, what's your kind of style with that? Like, how do you, how do you keep that in check? Like, you know, everybody's got their own kind of way, you know what I mean? To kind of deal with, you know, certain things like that. Some people avoid it altogether. Some people, you know, just really hammer them in. Um, and... I think they're, everybody's going to have their own way of going about it. I think it's, I think it's valuable to, especially if you're new to this gig, if you're new to the gig of documenting, if you're new, if you're new to, um, to pursuing subjects that have some emotional breadth or perhaps, uh, subjects who have uh, uh, experienced a certain amount of trauma, I would suggest that you know you really should talk to somebody who's who's done it for a while, like what their interview styles are. But look, you're going to find your own because ultimately speaking, interviews are conversational and investigative in nature, and there's there's a lot of different ways that you there's a lot of different ways you can do it. But ultimately speaking, you need to be you need to maintain a certain amount of etiquette. You need to maintain uh, a conversational and familiar uh, style of dialogue with the person that you're talking to, and at the same time, you can't be pu you can't be pushy. Y yet you're going to have to really dig in. You gotta you want to get what you need out of this person, but it's a delicate. It really is a delicate dance, you know. Uh, trying to you know trying to really dig in deep, especially if the subject matter is extraordinarily touchy like if you're doing a true crime uh style uh, uh interview or if you're like i said interviewing somebody who, ex who experienced some serious trauma sometimes it's best to just let them talk and let them really get into their story and when you need to get more just you know sort of as delicately and calmly as possible just ask why or can you elaborate on that or can you 
you know, you can ask your subject, can you elaborate on that? Just ask why. Like very simple, you know, very simple asks will probably get more out of them than you trying to press and feed. That's, at least in my experience, that's what I've found. Um, I've shot on a variety of shows that dealt with, uh, I mean, victims whose family members have been murdered or uh, terribly, unfortunately, like sexual assault, um, parents whose children who have passed on various medical shows. And these are terrible subjects to have them revisit and have to relive. So if you're, if you are, you know, digging into stories like that, you just have to tread carefully. You have to know that what you're, what you're trying to get from them, but you have to let them tell that story. And they'll get there. They're they're going to tell that story. And if you need a little bit more out of them, it's just best to be subtle. This is going to sound so silly. I know because I know it's going to sound unclear. But you need to be direct but subtle. Well, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. You have to you have to definitely you know know. I mean, I think a lot of times it's therapeutic. So it is sometimes like you have to like you know there is a certain part and you know that this is important. One for the story, but it's also probably important for them to talk about. I mean, it's really cathartic, but at the same time, like you can't push your subject one because you could piss your subject off, and then you know you no longer have access to your subject. You didn't finish your story, and then it's over. Two, I mean, you have to just really be cautious and careful because these are real emotions and these are difficult things for people to talk about. Whether you know you believe it's good for them in the end or not, it's just. Cool. Loud pipes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I also think that it's, it's valuable that your subject understands. You need to, with any project, you need to have a clear vision. You, you have to. So when you're approaching your subject or uh, uh, any production with you know, your pitch or with, your, with the story that you want to tell, make sure that you have a clear vision. The, best that, the better that your subject understands what you're trying to communicate, the better that your subject understands that you know your story is respect that what you're documenting is respectful of their experience, the more open they're going to be with you. So, you know, just as prepared as you are in regard to how you're going to film, how uh, it's it says just as important that your vision is clear. Mm -hmm. You have to have a vision. You have to have a plan. I mean, that that's really what it all comes down to. Know what you're going to be doing and make sure that. If you have a crew, that they know what you're going to be doing. Having a plan is clutch in any production. Uh, and the same goes with how you're communicating with your subject. They need to understand what, what you're trying to do and that you're respectful of the things that they're offering you. They're, they're letting you in. And you're probably a stranger to these cats sometimes. So, you know, don't go in there not being able to uh, make them understand and see what you're trying to do. None of these things are exact sciences. These are all theories. These are all, you know, um, th there, are, there are a variety of different ways of executing these things. But the bottom line, the root of it is know what you're doing, have a clear, have a clear vision, and uh, make sure you're as pre-planned as possible in executing these things. You don't want to waste anybody's time. You don't want to waste your own time. You don't want to waste money. And ultimately speaking, you know, your final product, if if you didn't, your final, uh, what would you call it? Your final. Yeah, I think product or yeah, your, final, uh, your piece. Yeah, it's yeah product. Your, well, your final piece will, will suffer, will suffer if it wasn't pre, if it wasn't planned well. Yeah. I, that is, that has been consistent with every job you and I have ever been on. That's totally true. I have seen people uh, make indie, indie flicks with all the money in the world and it looks like shit because they willy nilly it, you yeah. know, and just you don't want to suffer your part this takes time this takes effort on uh, from a lot of uh, people who are involved with you don't waste their time by not by not planning you, you gotta plan everything you really do yeah I as mean, much as possible obviously yeah of course there's always things, certain things that just happen and you just can never think but never you know imagine but yeah i mean that's another thing too is like if you do end up like you know having a one percent one person or a second person with you or if you have a huge crew it's like you know one be respectful, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, their time is valuable, you know what I mean? They're not gonna get that back. The fact that they're coming here and helping sure. you with your thing or you guys are working on this together, that you're putting your time into it, 
I mean, time is valuable. Respect that and respect that, you know, the person's probably, you know, got something to say or uh, especially like when you get in there and expertise, like, you know, if I hire somebody, it's like I hired them for a certain reason. So it's like I need to be able to, one, lean on them. I need them to be able to help me out. But also like, you know, sometimes it's like, hey, what do you think about this? You know what I mean? Like there's, there's like a, I hired them not just to do what I say. Right. You know I mean, which a lot of jobs are like, you know, do what I say. That's what your job is. And yeah. When I say jump, <laughs> yeah. I want to hear how high. Yeah, I hate that really attitude. Like, it's not really like a, a boss mentality. It's like very collaborative. I mean, it can be, but like the thing is, it's, it's like it never really I find the best sets are the ones where like everybody's going above and beyond because one, they believe in the project sure. or, or two, they just, they feel like they're more than just a hired hand. You know what I mean? Well, and that's the thing like on, again, you know, we, we we're sort of touching on like the various sizes of sets. Like you, you're going either from like a one, a one man band gig shooter to an actual departmentalized film set, which some documentaries absolutely have. But every position is valuable like from you know your director down to your production assistant i anytime anybody suggests that one is lower than the other well, it's not necessarily true your set runs well when it's running like a well-oiled machine every piston is doing what it needs to do every part is doing what it is operating at its best uh you know quality and capacity you know all of those things reflect on the final piece that's that's all there is to it. So yeah, you know, every position is valuable. So cool. Do we what next? Is this uh? <laughs> are we getting there? Yeah, what else do we need to talk about? We talked about a little bit of technical consideration. Talked a little bit more about prep. We talked a little bit about the subject. Um, Should we? Did we dig into prep enough? Yeah, I mean, I think I talked a little bit about it on the other shoot. I mean, basically, like, prep, what other considerations. Yeah, I mean, we could talk a little bit about, like, prep and stuff like that. I think, yeah, I mean, prepping for a shoot, um, obviously it varies. But let's just, let's just speak to the idea that this is, it's just you as an individual going out to shoot something. So what are the things that you need to take into, into consideration for prep? Um, there's, of course, like I said, not like I said, there's, of course, knowing your subject, knowing what your schedule is going to be like, uh, you know, what your day is going to look like, uh, having that planned out, like day one, you're filming this, day two, you're filming this, etc. Knowing your locations, scout your locations, check your locations out. Is this location going to require uh, a specific kind of lighting? Is this location kind of small? Are there safety considerations for that location? Know them before you go there as much as possible. Um, you know, know what camera you're using, like you were saying. So go ahead with the, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think like, um, well, I mean, yeah, prepping your camera. Uh, if we're, we're considering like very small, there's not too much to do. One thing, make sure your batteries are charged. Make sure you got oh, your yeah. SD cards. I mean, even sometimes like I'll go ahead and if I know I have no time, I'll go through all my cards and I'll format them and get them ready like so I can just pop them in. I'll have them labeled. Um, that way I know that, you know, this is it. But I mean, you know, things that I might need. So it's like, all right, I can't bring a lot of lights into here. So I've got this light and I've got this little tiny light or mm -hmm. you know I mean, or you know, like I've because I've looked at the area. It's like I probably have no light. So maybe I bring a little faster glass. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like all right, my F4 is not going to cut it here, you know what I mean? Um, so maybe I need to, f like, find someone who's got a 1.5 or, you know what I mean? Or if camera not, settings. I have to bring the light. What's that? Camera settings. Oh, yeah, camera settings. Know like, what frame rate you're going to be in. If, I mean, look, if it's your project, you choose if it's going to be 24 frames or 30 frames or whatever. But he and I know as uh, being hired on jobs, you you need to know what the production expects. Sometimes they want 29.97, sometimes they want 23.98. Yeah. If you shoot an entire day in the wrong frame rate, you've pretty much fucked production. <laughs> right. No, and too, like not even that, like frame rate, quality rate, um, you know what I mean? Like what are, like the, what's the split of like, for like higher productions, like we want the interviews in this, but we want all B-roll in this, or we want a 50-50 mix of B-roll and 60 frames per second and B-roll and 30% yeah. 30 frames per second. 
Um, and two, like, you know, another thing is like when you talk about locations, like know how far of a walk it is, know how safe the neighborhood is, Oh yeah. know what the weather is going to be like, you know what I mean? Um, do you need you, permissions to be there? Yeah. Do you need permissions to be there? Um, if you've got multiple locations, you should probably figure out the best place to park. That's going to be able to make your day. Um, yeah, you know, talk to the locations, people ahead of time. Like, even if, like, you know, sometimes, like, you'd be surprised where you pull up with a camera, even a small camera, and they're like, no, you can't film here. And it's like, this is a bakery. They're like, yeah, you can't film here. And then you're like, oh, I probably should have called ahead. Um, so, I mean, those are things to consider. Where is it next to, is there construction going on? I've been pulled up to a few times where I'm just like, oh, there's construction outside. Great. And mm-hmm. then all you hear is, yeah, I really enjoyed the pub. And you're just like a drill. Sound drill. considerations, yeah. You, yeah. you got to take all those things into account. Um, yeah, if you're open, are they open if you're at a business? You know what I mean? Like, so is that op- Is it open during a certain day? You know what I mean? Find out if you can even film the people who are there. Another yeah. thing to consider with, like, whether it's your own personal documentary or whether you've been hired to actually go out and shoot for a, an existing production. There are things called releases. You need permission to shoot someone, uh, film someone. Yeah. You need permission to film someone. You need permission to film your subjects. You need that stuff in writing. I mean, uh, you can get to the end of your shoot um, and yay, you uh, perhaps your doc- documentary or piece gets picked up or something. But if you find out later these cats didn't want you to film them at all, you've got your you don't. I mean, either going back to the drawing board and you know. Yeah, uh, I mean. Uh, and two, especially if you like for that, like the more, the higher you're going with your documentary, the more there's like, if you want to enter in film festivals, you better have all your locations. Like yep. Sign. You have to release your locations yeah, you have too. To release your locations. You have to release everybody that's visible on the frame. You know what I mean? Like, and these are things that you have to have, or they're like, no, you can't show this here. You know what I mean? Like just to get you in the doors to have all those kind of releases. Documentaries will take you into places that have a lot of people that uh, you can't necessarily realistically release. I mean, look, you're going to be filming in public. You're going to be filming in public places. So you have to consider certain things. You cannot film, uh, you can't film the faces of children. So if you're doing certain, like, without permission from their parents, excuse me, you can't film children without the permission of their parents. So if there are just children in the background that just happen to be there, just try to frame them out. You, you have to consider these things. It seems... Seems obvious, but trust me, you'll find yourself in situations where, like, it just isn't. You're going to go film in a park, you know? Watch mm-hmm. out for who you film. And if you do catch somebody, then try to go get them released. But if you can't release them, you can't show them. So that's something to consider. I think that's pretty close. Um, weather, yeah. parking, location releases. Do we say um, weather? Huh? Do we say something about weather? I think I said something about weather. No, your weather. Yeah. <laughs> Check your weather. It's going to rain. <laughs> Find out if it's going to rain, man, because... <laughs> Especially else. in Michigan. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's the thing, too. Like, things always change. So we'll talk about a little bit of weather. Like, you in Michigan, pivot. things always change. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It says, oh, it's a 50% chance of rain. It's probably going to rain. You know what I mean? <laughs> or if you're near the water, like, if you're close to the water, it's definitely going to rain. Like, if you're in Grand Rapids and it says 50% chance of rain... Is going right now. So yeah, it really it, it really does come down to planning. You can't plan enough, honestly. You can't. Being prepared for your shoot is just as important as how artistically you want to shoot it. Yeah, you've got a vision, and you want to execute that vision. Yeah, you've got a great camera, you got a great lens. Cool. It's not going to matter if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know where you need to be, when you're going to be there, what's going to happen when you're there. Like for just as much. For just as valuable as it is to expect the unexpected, try to try to uh, try to. Well, I can't remember what I was gonna say. Try to be uh, try to expect everything. I can't. Fuck, I had something here. Yeah. I think for as important as it is to expect the unexpected, try to know as much as you can. I fuck. I'm, I'm losing here. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, this. Uh, th- like I was saying, I think in the, I don't know, whatever Rodney plays it in, but like one of the videos earlier was like, like it's Murphy's Law. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if there's something that could go wrong, it more than likely will go wrong at right. some point. You might get away with it. You know, you might not prep here and there for a couple shoots. You know what I mean? You might get away with it. Yeah. And then one time it, 
it slams your ass and then that might be that one time where it's for a job and then <laughs> you're the reason why this job didn't go through and now you're the reason why you're getting sued for, you know, it costs money, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or you're the reason why you didn't shut down because of lightning storms and somebody got, you know, injured, you know, struck by lightning. Yeah, and you're responsible for it, you know what I mean? Or you got your talent hurt or you just really didn't consider, you know, or you ruined your gear or you ruined someone else's Yeah, career. there's so much on the line. So ultimately the most important thing you can do, and it sounds obvious, but I, none of us, none of us who are who have been working professionally as long as he and I have, would have to say it if it if it wasn't overlooked all the time. Be prepared. Be prepared in regard to what you're shooting. Be prepared on like for the day that you're shooting. All these things that we've we've suggested that you take into consideration, you need to take into consideration because it's it's tantamount to executing your day properly. I think it's it, it's important to remember like. There's a lot of different production types. It's there's the type that you want to do, like there's your own project, and there's the projects that you're hired to do. No. But both, both deserve the kind of attention and care and preparedness and respect that either would expect of you, that a client would expect of you, and what you would expect of your own job. So mm -hmm. that's, I yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you prep, you're only gonna you're only gonna do better, and the. That, that if you don't prep, like you will get away with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You will get away with it until you don't get away with it. And then no one's going to hire you or you're <laughs> going to have to learn the hard way that all these things that people have been telling me for years had meaning, they had value. Mm -hmm. And just pray to God that you don't get yourself injured. You don't, you know, ruin, you know, someone else's life. Because, I mean, it has happened. These yeah. things do happen. Another thing, too, is, you know, I mean you consider your subject when releasing that you know what i mean like there may if you, it's a really yeah, controversial subject or it's a really hard subject i mean you could ruin someone's life with this you know what i mean like yeah. especially on certain docs and stuff like that like people are never the same because of what happens or you know or you that on the good side you also have a lot of power a lot of uh murder investigations have been reopened because of documentaries you know what i mean there's a lot of value to the documenting process. There's a lot of value to, you know, to documentary filmmaking. And again, not to sound highfalutin, but you should take that into consideration in regard to what you're doing. There's value to it. There's, there's a lot of importance to it. You don't know necessarily how valuable your piece is gonna be. So treat it with the, treat it with the idea that what you're doing has importance because it does.